Has it been a while since you've flown? Are you ready to get back in the cockpit? In this video, we're going to explain how to renew your certificate and get back into the sky safely. And you know what? It's actually a lot easier than you think. Okay, first, what does it mean when your license is expired? Well, the good news is your pilot certificate actually does not expire. But if it's been a long time since you've flown, there are things that you'll need to do before you can fly again. Before we go on, you already heard me say license and certificate. So which one is correct? The FAA officially calls it a certificate, but you may hear both of the terms being used. So if your certificate doesn't expire, how do you know if you can still fly legally? Well, it's all about currency. And no, I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about currency as in being current. Being current means that you've met the minimum requirements set by the FAA. It requires that you do certain things within a specific time frame. And while your certificate doesn't expire, your currency does. For example, if you haven't flown in a few years, you are not current. So what do you need to do to get current again? Well, first thing, satisfy the medical requirements, which means that if you haven't flown in a while, it's probably best to check if you're still fit to fly. Now you're lucky because there are two ways to do this. The first one is to get the traditional normal FAA certificate. You'll need at least a third class medical certificate for a private pilot license. This involves a medical checkup with a doctor who specializes in aviation medicine. They're known as AME, Aviation Medical Examiner. The second way that you can satisfy the medical requirements is through a program that's called Basic Med. This is fairly new and allows you to avoid the hassle of getting a third class medical by meeting other requirements. To classify for Basic Med, your last FA medical certificate must have expired no later Later than July 14th, 2006. There are several more rules surrounding basic med that I'm not going to cover in this video, so we're going to put a link in the description for you to learn more. Okay, so now that you've satisfied the medical requirements, what's next? Well, you need to do a flight review. And the flight review consists of one hour of ground and one hour of flight training at the minimum, okay? Luckily, any CFI can perform the flight reviews. You actually don't have to go to a DPE, designated pilot examiner, like you did when you did your license initially. Before you do the flight review, you probably should get your skills back up to standard by flying with an instructor. Now, you might find that your flying skills will come back quickly, but other skills like radio communication might take a lot more work. Also, depending on how long it's been since you flew, you might have missed some substantial changes in the aviation industry. From rule changes to improvements in avionics, your instructor will bring you up to date with anything that you need to know. Okay, so you meet the medical requirements and you've passed the flight review. Congratulations, time to take grandma for a flight, right? Well, not yet. There's one more thing that you need to do. Although you can now act as the pilot in command, you're not allowed to carry any passengers with you. Carry passengers during the daytime, you'll need to have completed three takeoffs and three landings within the preceding 90 days. To carry passengers at night, you need to perform three takeoffs and three landings between one hour after sunset to one hour before sunrise. Now, these landings have to be full stop, so touch and goes don't count. Make sure that you do these in the same category, class, and type of aircraft that you'll carry passengers in. All right, now you really back in business. What do you have to do in order to stay current? Well, it's actually pretty simple. You need to do three things. First, maintain valid medical certificate by renewing it before it expires or by meeting the basic med requirements. Second, you need to complete a flight review every 24 calendar month. And third, to carry passengers, you need to perform three takeoffs and landings within the preceding 90 days. But there is even more good news. Getting a flight review is then actually the only way to stay current. If you get an additional certification, like an instrument rating, for example, this will count as a flight review. You can also avoid the flight review entirely by participating in the FAA's Wing Pilot Proficiency Program. Now, the Wings is like a progressive flight review, if you want. Instead of trying to cram everything into one flight, Wings allows you to train in smaller, more focused chunks. Now, instead of the flying portion of the flight review, you'll actually fly on a regular basis with your flying instructor throughout the year. And instead of the ground portion of the flight review, you can actually take online courses like ours and many courses that we offer from the comfort of your home. And as you get back into the pilot seat, you'll want to stay updated with any aviation news as it happens. It's exactly why we created the weekly general aviation news update. Check out the latest episode right here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.